Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86, and I'm going to talk about the EVGA X17 and X20 mice real quick. They're pretty much the same mouse, except the X20 is a wireless rendition of it. Costs a little bit more, but features a lot of the same feel, a little bit on the same weight size. The X17 is a little bit lighter because it doesn't have the battery in it, but for the most part, same mouse, and it feels like a really good mouse. One more noteworthy difference between X17 and X20, as I'm mostly talking about the X20 in this video, is that the X17 can pull up to 8,000 hertz. Also, the X17 features the 3389 sensor, while this one, the X20, features the 3335 sensor. It's kind of like gaming with an MX Master, and uh, that might not be your thing, but I figured I'd mention that because it's kind of got that raised feel. So even if you're a claw gripper, you may encounter the slight issue of no matter how you kind of hold the mouse, the back of it's going to probably hit your palm to some degree. I have some minor setbacks with it that uh, I think was a missed opportunity on EVGA's part, but I'll cover that in just a moment. Let's pause here and listen to what all these uh, clicks sound like. The switches are pretty nice. They actually use LK optical switches in these, which is, seems to be a staple with EVGA. They're all real soft depression actuation. Anyways, here's what they sound like. Now the mouse utilizes the 3335 sensor by PixArt. It is a great sensor in combination or in conjunction with the weight of this mouse. I think it feels really good, feels really snappy, feels really accurate, and I've got no complaints there. Even in wireless mode, I feel like it's just a really on-point sensor. You have all the common abilities that you have in most gaming mice, including the ability to pull to a thousand, access the macro editor to add macros in there, and change realistically only three zones of RGB lighting, which would be your wheel, the front headlights of the mouse, and the back logo. No side glow or underglow here, but that's okay, because RGB doesn't really make the mouse do anything other than look prettier for you. Battery life is actually pretty good. I've gotten a lot of battery life out of it. It seems to vary just depending on use. But for the most part, with the wireless version going in between charge times is, is pretty infrequent. I'll go several days without needing to charge it with a pretty moderate amount of play with it. So one of the connectivity issues that I don't like is it uses micro USB, but this is probably the last EVGA mouse that we'll see come out that's new that still features that and not something like USB-C. I want to see everything get to USB-C because those micro USBs, they have broken so many times in the past on me or bent and they're just a lot less trustworthy I think in the long run. A pretty cool feature about this mouse too is underneath it you'll see two different little sensors, one on the north end of the mouse and one off to the west side or the left side if we're looking at it holding it as such. These are liftoff sensors and you have two of them to kind of determine how high you're lifting off to help with stability of the mouse and its gameplay. In conjunction with liftoff distance in the software, these sensors help you with lifting off and, and of course landing the mouse and hopefully not making it jilt and jolt too much. People that like butterfly clicking, uh, that's that's going to be difficult here because that palm is so high with the ergonomic design that it features that it's just not a really comfortable hold for it. Is it capable? Yes. Is that bad to do for your wrist and your health? Yeah. And not to mention the fact that sometimes an anti-cheat software can render it as you are cheating when you're just using your inhuman skills to do that. I have a relatively large hand and I find these mice to be relatively large in my hand. Again, with this whole design feature that it has, it's gonna feel like it's a little bit bulky. So if you're somebody that prefers a smaller or lighter mouse, this is probably not gonna be for you, but if you like larger mice, if you like the design that it has, kind of that MX Mastery look and feel to it, this is perfect mouse for you. Now the missed opportunity that I had mentioned earlier is we have the sniper button on the side. And while you would think that it would have the bump up so that you could use your thumb to bump it up, have it macro to something else, it doesn't actually actuate by doing that you actually have to come off of the thumb grip area and depress it from the side it just seems like a real missed opportunity here as it would have been beautiful to be able to just side bump it and have it actuate whatever you wanted it to do there now speaking of side bumping the scroll wheel can go from either left or right side with either finger your pointer finger or your middle finger and you can actuate that one quite easily also on the topic of the scroll wheel it is a really stiff scroll and very rattly sounding. And that's something I'm not a big fan of, but I can look past it for the most part. I wish it was a little less tactile. I've had, I don't know if I've ever felt that way about a mouse wheel before, but a little less tactile here would have been nice. While weighing in at 126 grams seems like a lot, like I said with the 3335 sensor, it really is a nice combination of smooth feel and accuracy all in one. The mouse overall is a really good mouse and I definitely enjoy using it. I would probably recommend it to somebody as frequently as this thing is on sale, it's definitely worth consideration. 
I would check sale prices though and see what works best for you, but it goes on massive sale quite frequently. And if you're in the market for something that feels like quality, plays like quality, looks pretty quality, this might be it. Anyways, you guys have a great day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next video that I do.